Hey, Stargazers. Welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In today's episode, we're talking all about the autumn sky, the stars, the planets, the constellations that you can see as you head outside and look up this autumn. So let's begin in early fall, a couple hours past sunset. We're going to go outside and look straight up, and we'll see a very bright pattern here of three stars. This is the Summer Triangle. This bright pattern has been with us all summer and will remain visible, but lower in the sky throughout the fall. The three bright stars, Deneb, Vega, and Altair, they're all part of different constellations, but together make up this larger bright pattern of the Summer Triangle. We've got the bright star Deneb, that's part of Cygnus the Swan. Vega is part of Lyra the Harp, and Altair part of Aquila the Eagle. This bright pattern has reached its zenith for the year already, and it's going to be fading from prominence as the fall goes on. Let's now look northwest for a bright star that's on its way out of the sky, Arcturus. That's part of Boötes the Herdsman. It's shining bright in the west. You can confirm the star you're looking at is, in fact, Arcturus by using the handle of the Big Dipper, that nice arc shape that it makes, and you can just continue that line. You can arc to Arcturus. You'll have to catch Arcturus while you can, though. By late October, it's going to be getting tougher to catch in the evening twilight. Well, from there, you can turn your gaze to the south-southwest, and here you'll see the teapot shape of Sagittarius. From light polluted skies, this will help you show where the band of the Milky Way starts in the sky. And early fall is still a great chance to see the Milky Way, but you will need to get to a dark sky, and especially, if you can, on a moonless night. This beautiful band of light, which is our galaxy seen from the inside, is an amazing sight at this time of the year. It's stretching from the southwest all the way across the top of the sky to the northeast. Well, if you're looking for some planetary views, Saturn will be your best bet this season. You can head outside any clear evening in the early fall, and you'll see Saturn in the eastern sky, and it's rising higher and higher toward the south as the night goes on. By mid-November, it's going to be due south around sunset, though by that point it's going to be getting quite a bit dimmer. It's right on the border between the constellations of Aquarius and Pisces, neither of which have very bright stars, but that also means Saturn sticks out as the brightest object in this area of the sky. The one bright star seen beneath it in the southern sky is the star Fomalo, that's part of the southern fish, but Saturn's going to be a good deal brighter than that star during most of the fall. If you're hoping to get a telescopic view, the earlier in the fall, the better, as Saturn will be closer to Earth at that point. It'll be at its closest point for the year on the night of September 20th, and it'll be rising at that point opposite the setting sun. You will want to wait, though, to look at it through a telescope, though, until it's well above the horizon, ideally when it's at its highest point due south. Through a small backyard telescope, you should be able to see the globe of the planet and the rings, although this year the rings are going to be quite a bit less obvious than in this image we're seeing, which was taken about four years ago. That's because every 15 years or so, our view of Saturn's rings from Earth is almost exactly edge on. So Saturn appears ringless for a short period of time. We're currently in the middle of such an occurrence, which started earlier this year in March, and will culminate with another edge-on appearance in November. Turning now to face towards the northeast, we're going to see the true fall constellations starting to make their debut in the sky. The centerpiece is the zigzag W shape of Cassiopeia the Queen. She's about halfway up in the sky at this hour, joined by her husband Cepheus the King. Her daughter Andromeda the Princess is here as well, and also the son-in-law Perseus the Hero. If you're in a dark enough sky, you can spot another galaxy in this part of the sky. The Andromeda Galaxy will appear as a faint smudge of light to the naked eye. A little bit higher and straight east is another fall constellation, Pegasus the Flying Horse, marked by a nice bright square of stars. Keep in mind, we're looking right now in the early evening, the early part of fall. Throughout the season, though, you're going to find that the stars in the west are setting earlier and earlier, and those in the east appear higher and higher in the sky after sunset. By about mid-November, two hours after sunset will show a definite change in what's visible here in the east, with Cassiopeia and Andromeda well above halfway up in the sky, and some early signs of winter rising above the horizon. 
Here you'll find a beautiful star cluster called the Pleiades. It's also known as the Seven Sisters. It's an open cluster of stars. The brightest six or seven of these stars are easily seen with the naked eye, and binoculars or a telescope can reveal hundreds more. The whole cluster is moving through a cloud of interstellar dust, which results in a beautiful blue haze that surrounds many of the stars. The Pleiades star cluster is part of the constellation Taurus the Bull, and you can see the brightest star in Taurus, Aldebaran, marking the eye of the bull. Just to the left of Taurus, as it rises, is the bright star Capella, which is the brightest star in Origa the Charioteer. This grouping will be dominating the top of the sky in the winter, but for now, it's just starting to make an appearance in the evening sky. The moon will be making its way around the sky as well this fall, with a few notable appearances in the evening sky. On October 5th, look for the moon to be rising quite close in the sky to Saturn. Four nights later, on the 9th of October, the moon will rise quite near to the Pleiades star cluster, and over the course of the night, its motion will take it across the cluster in the sky. You'll need binoculars to make out the stars in the cluster against the glare of the moon. So I hope you have a chance to get out there this fall and look up and see all that the fall sky has to offer. That's what we have for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Clear skies, and we'll see you next time.